postmodern society. You may also see the terms post-structural or post-industrial. And while there are nuances between these different terms, the ideas that I'm going to talk about in this video are fairly common to all of them. This video is made in connection with some four other videos that together describe the way that sociologists and other social scientists can classify different kinds of society based on a variety of characteristics. Those characteristics include, if you've watched the other videos, this is not new, um, population, living arrangements, division of labor, technological development, diversity, social solidarity, and rationality. The basic idea being that differences in these characteristics influence the way the society works and the experience of people living within that society. If you've watched the other videos, the pre-modern and modern video videos, um, you'll know that I use a sort of phrase that epitomizes or typifies the attitude or worldview of people living in that kind of society. I don't have an equivalent phrase exactly for postmodern society, but the basic idea that I think describes the postmodern society is the idea of picking and choosing. In a postmodern society, there are so many different cultural ideas all jumbled into one place that some people even talk about culture as being shattered in a postmodern society. And for a better understanding of this idea, there's a video on culture that will kind of help you get a grasp on that. If you remember in the pre-modern video, I used the uh, example of people living on a tropical island as um, a kind of pre-modern society. The modern society, I used a, a cowboy western town like you might see in a Hollywood movie. A postmodern society typically takes place in a very large urban environment, a city like New York or LA or something like that, where you have millions of people living together in one place. If you go back to this idea of the culture being shattered, um, we can think of a postmodern society like a city like Las Vegas, where you have a literal buffet of architectural styles. If you go through Las Vegas, you'll see a pyramid and a space needle and buildings that look like castles. You'll see a tremendous uh, collection of architectural styles from all around the world and throughout history. In a postmodern society, there are so many different cultural elements that individuals don't belong so much to a culture as they create their own culture. If you imagine a buffet, I could walk down a buffet with a plate in my hand and I could take elements from different cultures. I could have some Chinese food, some Mexican food, um, some Italian food, and I could make my own custom meal based off those different cultural uh, cuisine elements. Individuals in postmodern cultures can pick and choose from cultural pieces to create their own individual cultural identity or personal style. Sometimes within a postmodern society we may find pockets of pre-modern culture. Um, we call these subcultures. For example, the, uh, the punk rockers that live in a big city might have a pre-modern kind of culture within their own group but they're just one piece in this larger postmodern society. If we go back to our standard list of characteristics, population of postmodern societies are large, usually in the millions. Living arrangements uh, are usually, usually urban. Um, sometimes they're suburban with people commuting into the city for work. Now, that's important when you connect this idea of division of labor. Durkheim argues that the jobs people do create their place in culture. When people are all doing the same kind of work, they have a pre-modern or very homogenous kind of culture. In a postmodern society, the division of labor is very high, with very highly specialized roles. So each individual is very different one from another because they're all doing different jobs. This is uh, increased when you have people who live in the suburbs but commute into the city to do their job. This further disconnects them from the city environment. The only place they maybe know in the city, for example, is their office or maybe the place they eat lunch. This further disconnects them from those around them. Technological development is very high. 
um, computers and robots begin replacing human workers, which again, you know, disconnects people from their working environment. And communication technology is very high, and this is important because it allows people to communicate not with a person right next to them, but with someone maybe on the other side of the world, which further enhances that ability for people to choose their own individual culture. Diversity is very high. Uh, every person is unique in a society like this, and there's a very strong individualist culture. Some sociologists have even talked about the cult of individuality in postmodern societies. Social solidarity is based on organic solidarity, but sometimes the diversity can become so high that social solidarity actually breaks down. People no longer feel connected to one another. Rationality, uh, the way people view the world, there's so much information in a postmodern society that the very ideas of truth and reality become questioned. Um, people can't agree on virtues and values and ideas, and so this almost extreme skepticism develops. Whereas in a modern society, science was, is generally trusted, um, and rational approaches to thinking are valued, postmodern societies have so much information, uh, the culture is so shattered, that even knowledge is sometimes not agreed upon. Thanks for watching.